In this video we're going to look um, at the set of classes that formulate the structure in computer memory which is designed to support a set of use cases that we discover when describing the use cases in our functional specification. In general uh, the functional requirements which are made up of a set of use cases each individual uh, use case uh, in our functional spec is um, entirely procedural by its definition because use case model describes the steps uh, taken by the system and uh, responses or actions uh, taken by the user. So these are just a sequence of steps in the scenario of use cases and they're purely procedural. There is very little um, about um, them uh, that could be described as object-oriented. So the focus of uh, each use case is just describe uh, like a recipe, a set of steps to perform certain tasks. However, of course, descriptions of use cases uh, mention all sorts of concepts and things uh, that eventually materialize into uh, actual software classes. So our focus is basically shifting from this procedural description of uh, system interaction into a structure that will support all of the requirements in our functional specification. So when we are uh, going to uh, discuss the process of building this analysis model of our system, it's best to focus on the responsibilities of classes uh, that we will uh, have in our system and responsibility really kind of concentrate on the major purposes of the classes that we will have. So there is a methodology known as uh, class responsibilities collaboration cards that uh, we will talk about a little bit later on. Uh, of course, so we're going to look at the idea of class specification through the set of data attributes, uh, class constructors, and uh, set of operations. And we are also going to look at a variety of uh, classes that exist and supported by the software. Also, we're going to mention um, things defining abstract classes and uh, abstract interfaces. We're also going to look at the visibility of different data members um, at the levels of public, uh, protected and private, which um, makes uh, a separation uh, between the part of the class which is implementation and which is part of its public interface. And also going to uh, look at some detailed information about the signatures of operations. So these are the set of handouts and videos uh, for uh, this section of the course. So let's start with this presentation, Designing with Objects. In the early stages of the analysis model, uh, our task is to identify classes, focus on understanding and defining classes, uh, and later we put our class concepts to test by analyzing object states, uh, processes, activities, as well as, as studying uh, details of object interactions using sequence diagrams and other tools. In object-oriented design approach, we know that computer memory will be occupied by a set of interacting objects. So designing with objects is not an abstract idea. Ultimately, it is a way to manage computer memory. So with this in mind, are facing a set of uh, challenges. Uh, we need to have a pretty good grasp of concepts that we're trying to build. Uh, we need to prepare that uh, the software development is highly iterative and long-term activity. Um, the, system, uh, the systems that we use and uh, construct uh, typically um, uh, happen to be at the limit of the complexity that our tools can handle. And uh, this is not just because uh, we want this, but uh, because the programmers are um, creative people and they would like to use the latest features of the technology. Experimentation, of course, is very essential to make this uh, process uh, successful. 
and anything non-trivial has to be tested um, in a very um, precise way. And uh, also, uh, all of this uh, uh, cycle of activities uh, is typically very, very iterative um, and cyclical in its nature. So more challenges uh, in this process that uh, it's, uh, it's easy to underestimate some tasks and uh, uh, it is uh, uh, sometimes hard to transform ideas into practice. So design and programming are human activities and uh, we have to understand that uh, we need a good um, interaction between members of the team who is involved in building the software. Of course, uh, we need uh, some experience um, and uh, uh, that means uh, we need to hands-on practical uh, work to be done extensively and not uh, just uh, accept uh, some kind of theoretical study as a proof of concept. So uh, sometimes um, it is also uh, a little bit uh, difficult to rely on successes of previous uh, software projects. So the ideas and practices that um, used to work in the past may not necessarily translate as successfully to a new uh, or different project uh, without um, major modifications. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, our studies um, in, uh, in this course are focusing on a larger scale software development. This is a bit larger than just, uh, you know, a few pages of programming code that implement some kind of uh, uh, user, a simple user interaction, gathering some parameters and executing a simple set of steps. This is more of a, a multitasking, multi-user system type of development. So people who are not involved in such development can sit back and enjoy a look at the horrors that they have es escaped. So let's uh, take on on these uh, challenges. Of course, we're facing all of this complexity in software um, and uh, software de development has to deal with a lot of complex uh, set of ideas. So of course, we, uh, we want to divide and conquer um, uh, type of approach um, to deal with complexity. Basically, uh, splitting a problem into uh, multiple sub-problems um, uh, is uh, a great way to uh, find the right uh, way to find the solution. Uh, so uh, separation is sort of easy with both people uh, and software tools and uh, the, the code that we create. Uh, so uh, this simple principle can be applied in, in a lot of different ways, which is good news, really. Implementation uh, can be connected by a set of well-known interfaces. Essentially, we need to modularize uh, so we, we can start viewing the system as a bunch of modules. Uh, for example, we can say this is our view, this is our model, this is our controller, and so they interact through well-known interfaces. So we can formalize interaction uh, between different components and stick to that type of formal interaction in a set of interfaces that is defined by uh, very well-known operations. We should also recognize the processes that uh, break into distinct activities. So essentially what we, uh, another view of this is that we need to gather information, then we need to do some computation, then we need to do some validation, then we need to be able to store the results and so forth, right? So there, uh, this kind of um, view of uh, processes as staged uh, set of activities is a very nice and successful approach uh, to um, divide uh, complex tasks into simpler tasks. We we'll also um, have to rely on how the users are using the system and therefore of course we need to understand what type of interactions uh, we have in the system what is level of detail of these interactions. So that all contributes to uh, breaking down the complexity of tasks to solve, uh, to be solved into uh, more manageable pieces. 
So more experience is required when selecting parts and when specifying the interface between the parts. Essentially, when we view any sort of uh, modularization, right, um, the, uh, the actual design aspects um, of this is to define these connections, how actual uh, parts of the system interact uh, with each other, right? So what operations are available in these interaction? Uh, this is uh, uh, this is something that requires some experience mm, and um, the formalization of these uh, of these interactions between the different modules in the system uh, is something uh, that is of a very high importance at the stages of the analyzing functional specification and coming up with the set of uh, classes uh, to be able to build the software. So um, aims and means, of course, so we need to be able to uh, build uh, parts of software and we need to be focusing on testing the software very early on. So we need to have a very clean internal structure in terms of okay we just built this component in the system so let's also build another component like test unit that can put this concept to test and te be able to test it independently so we need to have this uh, uh, type of approach to testing um, when we write code and when we create the component right so we typically start to, uh, doing it on a specific inside specific environment specific operating system hardware platform and so forth but if we consider other platforms that should be available how do you port this into different uh, different environment so this is also something that needs to be uh, understood and uh, and be given attention, not, not at the time when the entire component is now finished, but as we write, as we create this component, we already should keep in mind that this component may potentially exist in the other system. And do we do everything in a portable way, in a way that complies with uh, well-known standards and practices, which, could, which will be common on different platforms? So maintenance, uh, of course, means that uh, we need to have a good grasp of uh, good control of the uh, systems that we create so that we can maintain like fix bugs or uh, fix um, minor issues um, in a responsive way. Basically, uh, fixing something should not be taking like 80% of our time all the time. It's okay in early stages to do some tweaking and it could be taking indeed uh, up to 80% of your time. But in the long run, maintenance is supposed to be manageable and not like unpredictable and unknown amount of time. Extensibility is kind of similar to maintenance. Basically, extensibility of software is that when we have the component and now we are thinking about set of new features. Uh, so essentially, uh, this component should be kind of open to an extension. It should not be so complicated that we don't even know how to approach this. We basically have to have a vision such that new components kind of fill in and fit in the existing components uh, naturally. So that's extensibility. Essentially, when you write this component, you already anticipate that new features will be added in the future. And so again, you're doing this with this idea in mind. A reorganization is more sort of a uh, 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 more um, uh, the higher level than than just an ext extensibility. Reorganization means that we are trying to move uh, to a new version. Uh, so basically, now that the component exists uh, as version one, and we know we now want to move to version two, what we may be able to do is to be able to identify the parts of this version one essentially separate them okay like basically view them as separate ind independent pieces like this and in version two of course there will be new pieces uh, and now we have to uh, reassemble everything 
somewhat different, right? So we have to put together this new version of software in this type of approach. Again, reorganization means that we need to have a clear understanding of the initial structure, clear understanding of why we have all of these components in place, how they interact with each other so that we can take it to the new level. So that's sort of like organization idea, which is, of course, a little bit more than just extending something by adding new features to already existing platform. And understanding is the key uh, to all of this, right? If understanding actually means um, that we have control of the work that we do, that we're not losing control because we are hiring uh, new people and some people retire or move on to other projects. We need to have substantial uh, software design. We need to have substantial documentation. And of course, the quality of the work needs to be adequate so that we continue maintain the understanding level of software at such level that's, that all of this activity is possible today, tomorrow, month from now, a year from now. So that's, that's the idea behind the successful uh, software design. And that's what we have uh, in mind when we aim for this long-term activity of a successful software project. Now, successful software um, um, has extended life. Okay, so it's not just version one, it could be multiple successful versions of the software. Um, so oftentimes in the span of a few years, you will have a succession of both programmers and designers contributing to the system. So it's not just the original team uh, that uh, creates it uh, and makes it successful for uh, a number of years. Uh, then, uh, of course, successful software is very often ported to the new hardware platforms um, and uh, sometimes being adapted by absolutely unanticipated users and uh, repeat, repeatedly reorganized. So that's something that we discard, discussed on the previous slide. Again, this piece is uh, key when we maintain a good level of understanding of the structure of all the design design decisions and maintain adequate um, uh, organization. So not planning for something like this is actually planning to fail. 